I'm Bob Brill. He's Eric Kramer. Welcome to Kramer and Brill, a fantasy football podcast and now a video cast. You can hear the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Or you can also you can see the video cast on YouTube by going to my Bob Brill YouTube channel or by finding the links for all of this at Kramerandbrill.com. That's the easiest way. Well, we're into week five now. The winners this week, Patrick Mahomes with five touchdown passes. Matt Ryan had four. Taylor Heineke, wow, what a day. 293 TD passes and 43 yards rushing. Dak Prescott had four touchdowns. Jalen Hurts, 387 and a pair of scores. And this will make you happy. Sam Darnold, two touchdown passes and two more rushing touchdowns. Yeah, I probably made Sam Darnold happy too. And uh, he's been off to a good start. Mac Jones is the guy that I, you know, in all of this Brady Belichick build up the last week, the forgotten guy was Mac Jones. Right. And yet here he comes out, completes nearly 80% of his passes, nearly 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He did throw a pick, but solid game under any circumstances for a rookie quarterback, much less the most hyped, probably NFL regular season game in history. Yeah. And uh, where he wasn't even a thought going in. And so he was a one missed you know, like one inch to the right, and it probably would have carried off and went in the goalpost. So he's one missed field goal away from staging uh, a great finish for the Patriots that game. And he would have been the story and not Tom Brady and Bill Belichick in that little mini hug at the end. <laughs> right, right. And he's probably, if you think about it, of all the five quarterbacks drafted in the first round, to this point, he's the most solid by far, not even close. And that's why I drafted him in the first round. After I drafted Najee Harris, see, I traded up to get Harris and, and, you know, I, I still kept my other first round pick and I had my choice of uh, him and just Justin Fields, I think was gone. And I didn't, I didn't want the kid from the Jets, Zach Wilson. No way. Uh, not that I didn't like him. I just didn't want a quarterback for the Jets. Well, about well the running you, back, you explained your excellence and really there's no explanation needed. You got him. I got him. Among the running backs, nine running backs passed the 100-yard mark rushing, led by Derek with um, 157, Zeke Elliott with 143 and a score. The big guy, though, was Cordell Patterson in Atlanta. 34 rushing, but five catches for 82 yards, three touchdowns. Austin Eckler had 117, and he had two scores, but one of those was in the air as well. Yeah, speaking of Eckler, in my opinion, the most impressive is all those you, all those names you just named off to me, was Eckler. I was at the game, uh, and he, to me, seems like, you know, kind of the ultimate, along with a few others, dual threat running back, you know, kind of like Alvin Kamara, Christian yeah. McCaffrey. Not only is he solid in and outside of the tackles, but I think mostly underrated as, you know, uh, as a receiving, not just a pass catcher and a guy to knows the ball off to, but someone that can run routes. And, I think he showed up in a big way and was probably, along with Justin Herbert, the MVP, at least, of the offense in that Charger win. The other um, running back I'll mention this week is Damian Williams, and that's the guy that replaced David Montgomery, who's now out. And I'm going to guess is probably the most popular um, pickup this week because he looked solid. If you go all the way back to that 49ers, I'm sorry, the um, – uh, Chiefs win in the Super Bowl against the 49ers. It was really Damian Williams. Yeah, that he had a great game. Should have been probably the MVP of that game. They gave it, I know, to Mahomes. But uh, I just think he's behind. You know, the one thing the, the Bears have stayed committed to is running the football. And they've done it with Montgomery, who's looks solid. Uh, Williams looks solid coming in from Montgomery when he did get injured. And so I think uh, moving forward, to me, knowing that they've got a young quarterback now in fields who they've named the starter for the rest of the way, He's going to need a solid running game. I think Damian Williams is going to be the guy to provide that. You know, the wide receivers, hard to beat a guy that was – we were all over last year. You were you were all over Tyreek Hill. Had 186, three scores on 11 of 12 targets. 12 targets, he caught 11 of them. Debo Samuel had 156 and two scores. DJ Moore, 113. I like Terry McCarl uh, McLaurin to come back big, and he did. Had a pair of touchdowns on – 123 and only six catches. Now, we both like Justin Herbert, as you mentioned. He was good this week. Aaron Rodgers, too, while neither of us picked up, uh, you know, picked Roethlisberger to do much. We were right on that all the way across the board. But neither of us like Corey Davis or Eddie Jett. Well, Davis did finally break through, had four grabs, 111 and a score. A lot of waiver wire pickups this week. Nobody saw C.J. Uzoma, the Bengals' backup tight end, who led all tight ends, five catches, 95 yards, and had a couple of touchdown grabs. Well, I'll go back to what you said about uh, 
Tyreek Hill and what everybody knows. The guy is uncoverable, really. Yeah. And I, in fact, I even heard uh, one of the commentators in the game mention, how does anybody think that it's okay to, do- to not double team him or play yeah. him straight up man to man? It's not going to work. Um, but I'll go to a different receiver, and that's Travis Kelsey, who I said every week seems to be the one guy in Kansas City, along with Mahomes, you can bank on. And he was vacant this past game. Not to say that I wouldn't start him again next week, because I would if I had him. But uh, I still think he's the most consistent threat uh, weapon-wise that, that the Chiefs have. Um, and I'll also go to Darnell Mooney in Chicago and say, this guy is exploding and has done it now a couple of times this year. Um, you know, and despite no other real weapons down the field, he is the down the field weapon. He had one of the best catches I've seen so far this year in the NFL and a throw that he was wide open and fields overthrew him drastically. And yet he laid out, somehow came up with the catch. He was also on the receiving end of a great double move, which Justin Fields delivered perfectly for, I think, a 64, 65 yard uh, catch and run. So I think, uh, you know, both of those guys to me stood out, um, you know, receiving wise this week. All right, let's take a look at the, the games this week. Start with the Thursday night game, the Rams and Seahawks. Now, I like Matt Stafford to rebound this week. I just think last week was an off week for him. I mean, he still had 280 yards passing, but he was still off his game. I sold on Van Jefferson and Cooper Cup. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, I see his hit or miss. And this week, I got to say it's a miss. Well, a- anytime uh, Russell Wilson's on the field, he's not only one of the best passers in the league, but he's also one of the best running quarterbacks in the league. Uh, he doesn't run a lot down the field. But when he chooses to, he's very effective. Uh, the 49ers' strength this year, to me, is on defense. And so they were able to limit uh, sales passing and running game quite a bit this week. But Russell, like Lamar Jackson, he's a guy that in an instant can take what looks to be a sure sack and turn it into a scramble around either run or passing touchdown. Uh, not a lot of guys in this league can do that. And so, um, you know, I like what he's done so far this year, even though, they're, you know, Seattle has – uh, not a great record, and offensively, they're not doing a whole bunch, either running or passing the ball uh, just yet. And even weapon-wise, you know, Tyler Lockett was saw the first couple weeks and then disappeared. DK Metcalf disappeared the first couple weeks. Now he came back and has a solid couple games. But there's really nobody other than Russell Wilson who looks to be someone you can bank on week to week just yet. Jets at Falcons, did we see the real Zach Wilson in the last week? Against Atlanta, we might see another good game, although I doubt 297 yards is in the offing. Uh, I may regret this, but I'm playing Corey Davis if I have him. And as fantasy owners, I wouldn't forget about the other uh, Jet option in Jameson Crowder. To me, one of the best slot receivers in the league and can is dynamic after the catch as well. But switching over to the Falcons, I'll say, you know, they got a 1-3 record. Offensively, they have not gotten off to a good start. And yes, Cordero, Cordero Patterson had a great game last week. He had three big plays, uh, touchdowns, um, receiving, but he's not a guy that's really done much running the ball. Other than last week, he wasn't, he's not been a guy that's done much receiving. And kind of like you mentioned with CJ, CJ Ozoma with the Bengals, I wouldn't expect Cordero Patterson to keep going in that direction either. Uh, the Washington's defense, um, you know, is not really you know, been great this year. And, uh, you know, I think for the Falcons, you know, nobody's really stood out. Nobody who you would come into the season thinking would. Certainly, I thought Pitts would break out. He has it. Uh, I thought Ridley would pick up where he left off the last year or two. He has it. And Ryan's not getting any younger. So I I think it's going to be tough to pick a Falcon offensively to pick up where they left off last week. I think you got two guys uh, that we look at aging quarterbacks uh, in the league who are just not – getting it together, and that, that's Roethlisberger and Ryan. I think they're both in the same boat. Uh, Lions and Vikings, an in-division game with the Vikings at home. Jefferson, Cousins, Cook are all solid plays. Keep an eye on the Cook, though. Uh, he's had an ankle issue. I uh, didn't get to play as much as he wanted last week. Now, if he can't go, then Alexander Madison is a solid play, and I'm moving Thielen to flex this week. Yeah, and, I, and flipping over to the Lions, it's really just you know their own four, and it's really offensively hard to bake on anybody with them. Um, Hawkinson, who's really last year stepped into that role of he's, I think, their best offensive weapon, most versatile guy, and they're designing plays for him. And But 
you know, he hasn't really done much so far this year. Um, Jared Goff hasn't really exploded. And despite the fact I think they've got two excellent running backs in Jamar Williams and DeAndre Swift, neither one has really kind of produced consistently for an entire game. Um, and then you've got – you're missing Galladay, and so nobody offensively other than Hawkinson in the passing game has stepped up. Tough for me to bank on anybody here – uh, with Detroit going into this game fantasy-wise. Saints to Washington, you know, I always like Taysom Hill. And he proved his worth at least as a flex play last week. But it's a gamble. It's a gamble to put him in. So two rushing touchdowns, a pair of catches, and nine yards passing. Now, I cannot recommend Jameis Winston, uh, but Kamara, always solid. His 120 rushing came with no scores and no receptions, though. Michael Thomas is out, as is Tony Jones. So uh, look at possibly Marquez Callaway at wide receiver. And I do expect uh, Sean Payton to put Hill in for more opportunities. So if you've got him, and you don't have a better flex play, I mean, I'd stick him in there. I mean, what have you got to lose? Hey, that was an impressive run he had last week, wasn't it, to score? I mean, he went through about five guys on his way to scoring. Um, but you're right. He's an intriguing guy to have. I'll flip over and take Washington and say that, you know, as you mentioned earlier, Taylor Henneke, what a great game. A couple games he's had so far this year. And um, I think the benefiting, the most, the person that most benefits from Henneke playing well is so far been Terry McLaurin. Uh, who's already good on his own right, but he had 123 yards and a touchdown. Antonio Gibson was solid as well. I'd look for both of those guys, again, to keep that going. The Saints defense is tough, and that's why I wouldn't bank on Taylor Henneke, uh, you know, keeping going with, you know, 300 yards passing and, what, 50 yards rushing. But I do look for these other guys to still perform and do well. Patriots and Texans, Mac Jones, you mentioned earlier, does look like the real deal. And against the Texans, I think he's a solid play. Jacoby Myers is an interesting flex play, having completed two passes and caught another uh, caught another eight. Uh, Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith sharing tight end play. So, you know, as much as I like those guys, I cannot recommend either. There's just not enough volume there. Yeah, the Patriots are an enigma offensively, at least. And uh, so far, anyway. And it's hard to see kind of where they're kind of directing their attention. And maybe they, because they aren't, there's really no one to bank on. But flipping over to the Texans, coming into this year, knowing Watson wasn't going to play, it was hard to expect much from them. Now that the rookie David Mills or Davis Mills is starting, uh, there's even less to like. Brandon Cooks is probably their best down the field threat or receiving option. But you'd figure Belichick's Patrick defense, they know how to lock a guy down if you've only got one option. And I, Running the ball, nobody stands out for the Texans. And I just think Davis Mills is going to face a lot of pressure and confusion, especially on third down. Dolphins and Bucks. Now, if you have Jason Sanders, the Dolphins kicker, you have to be frustrated. Last year, he led all kickers. And this year, he's not even getting the scoring chances. The team is not scoring touchdowns. And normally, that's okay because you're going to get some field goal opportunities. But he's not even getting any field goal ops either. Five field goal attempts and six PATs in four games. That's ridiculous. That's like nothing. Uh, I do like Mike Kosecki and Jalen Waddle here, but not much else. William Fuller, by the way, is on IR. Isn't it crazy how last year, how strong the Dolphins finished, and yet now it looks like they're starting where they started last season, or how they started last season. So flipping over to the Buccaneers, I'll say Brady is probably one of the top producing NFL quarterbacks this year. Uh, Antonio Brown uh, has been the guy that's been getting, getting, been rightfully getting the most yeah. balls thrown his way. He had seven and catches now with, last week. Yeah, and, and every week. And now with Gronkowski down, I think that's going to continue. Fournette. I think is back to being who he was at the end of last year down the stretch towards that Super Bowl run. He was punishing players or defenders last week running the ball. So he's to me a good back as well. Especially if you guy if you're looking to get, you know, 70, 80 yards and a touchdown out of your running back, he's the guy to do it. Packers at Bengals, Aaron Rodgers did a number on the Steelers last week in a game which should have been closer. And I like him again against another AFC North team. Randall Cobb is worth a flex. A longtime Packer caught five for two scores, and Rodgers likes him. And I really like A.J. Dillon for at least a flex here. He just seems to be that punishing runner like you were just talking about, Fournette. Yeah, and, you know, I'll flip over to the Bengals and say, hey, second-year Joe Burrow looked like eight-year all-pro Joe Burrow, although it was against the Jaguars last week. And against this week's Packers, D, I don't expect the same. But he's trending in that direction kind of week to week. You know, he's not going to have – he's not going to show up and have a bad game uh, or a disastrous game, it doesn't seem. 
I do expect him to get back in sync, though, with Jamar Chase. Um, and Tyler Boyd, I think, will also have another good game. Maybe not like as, as well as he did last week. And I think Joe Mixon's the real deal as well there. Broncos at Steelers. I'm looking for a return to the lineup of Chase Claypool, which will make a big difference. And I'm trading Juju if I have him. And I'm benching Ben. Harris is a solid play, as is Deontay Johnson. Now, if Claypool's back from injury, he's a wide receiver one. I feel your pain as a Steelers uh, <laughs> lifelong fan with the Bears. Obviously, they were struggling to start the year, and the Steelers offensively have too. Um, but I'll switch over and take the Broncos here. You know, Bridgewater left the game with concussion. I know I've read he's, you know, they haven't made a decision on him just yet. If I'm an owner, I'm not playing him, um, whether he plays or not. Uh, I don't expect him to be back, which means Drew Locke, who finished last game, um, and, you know, is inconsistent. That's who's going to start this week. And it's his inconsistency that paved the way for Teddy Bridgewater in the first place to be the starter. So it's tough for me to like anybody with the Broncos because they really haven't, you know, established their identity or who they go to in certain situations. One week it's one guy, one week it's another guy. Really tough to bank on them. I, I do, though, think the Broncos have a good shot at beating the Steelers. You know, at work, there's another Steeler fan, and I got to tell you where it's gotten to this point. He came up to me this morning uh, before I got off the air, and he said, you know, I'm not, I'm not sad the Steelers are one and three. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, if we go one and 16, we're going to get one hell of a good young quarterback. <laughs> why they didn't have, why they haven't employed that thought two, three, <laughs> four years ago, I'm not sure, but he's right, I think. <laughs> Eagles and Panthers, the real Jalen Hurts showed up this week, and wow, he was on fire against the Panthers. I got to believe he's solid again. Rookie Kenneth Gainwell picked it up and looks good as a flex if you want to chance it. A waiver wire pickups for him last week, uh, this week, are really happening. Yeah, Jalen Hurts just seems so tempting because he's not just, he's not the finished product yet, but you can see his improvement over last year over what seems to be kind of every game this year. Um, I'll switch over to the Panthers and say that I love what I'm seeing so far in Sam Darnold. Here's a guy that was written off, uh, resurrected his career. All he needed was a new environment, a new coach, new players around him. And now he's putting 300-yard game after 300-yard game passing the ball. He's the league's leading rusher, which I wouldn't expect him to end the season that way in terms of touchdowns. But that just shows you what, you know, he's got a belief in himself. He's got a team and a city and a coaching staff around him that also believe in what he's doing. And so good things are starting to happen. And the big beneficiary of that on his own team, I think, is DJ Moore, his favorite target, uh, who is himself an excellent talent. Um, and so I just think that, you know, this week uh, against the Eagles defense, who has been suspect, I think they're, off, uh, you know, set up to have a good game. Titans and Jaguars after Henry and Tannehill. I don't think there's really much to like, although McNichols is intriguing. Uh, but he's a running back who catches the ball, and he's behind Derrick Henry, which means he's not going to get that many opportunities. But he is, a, if you're looking for a guy who has a flex player or, you know, maybe a second option, you don't have anything better, it might be worth a shot. I mean, he's a, not a bad handcuff. Well, with the Jags on an already bad team, Urban Meyer just became the story, unfortunately, yep. for his team, for himself and his team. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have had a Jaguar on my fantasy team at any, you know, to start this year or likely at any point, and I wouldn't now either. I think uh, Tennessee's, you know, kind of they're moving in one direction. The Jags are moving in another and so I, whoever I have on the Jags, I probably don't have anybody if I'm a fantasy owner. Uh, I wouldn't start them this week. Yeah, because McCaffrey's questionable. And, you know, they're just, you know, like you said, uh, Myers' story, there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, negativity about him anyway. And now we've got this latest thing uh, that, that's popped up and it's getting worse. So, I mean, he could be out by the end of the week. Uh, at, at some point, if, if not, you know, maybe uh, another week to go. I'll have to wait and see what uh, Khan decides uh, as, as the owner. Got the Bears at Raiders. Well, we want to take over here. Well, I'll just say that in one week's time, the Bears went from, is Matt Nagy going to get fired before the game or after the game, to all of a sudden now he hands the, the play calling, game planning, and, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 
the game plan and play calling off to Bill Lazor, who does a phenomenal job. The Bears execute like a new team all of a sudden. Justin Fields looks great. They run on the ball great. Defense plays excellent. So now they play the Raiders, who now are going to be coming off a loss, a short week of preparation. And so I think the Bears, if they just stick to what they've done last week, you know, run the ball. And as I said, Damian Williams is going to step in and run behind a confident now offensive line. Justin Fields, I look forward to, you know, get back doing what he did last week and taking advantage of the extra time he's got with a good running game, which leads to excellent time with play action, down the field throws, Mooney's going off. I just, I like the Bears in this game, even though the Raiders came in the last week 3-0, they looked a little vulnerable even last week, and they couldn't close the game or couldn't finish the game in their comeback, whereas I think the Bears, these are the kind of games they're going to have to win to become relevant again. And I pick, I predicted them to go 9-8 and eight this week or this year, and I think they're, these are the type of games they're going to have to win to make that happen. So did you make a call to the Bears last week? Because I listened back to our podcast from last week, and you said what Nagy needs to do is give up his offensive coordinator playing play uh, play calling to the assistant coach. They do, and they come out with, with this kind of game as opposed to the week before. So uh, either they were listening – or you made a call, or somebody is out there in the ozone somewhere. <laughs> I did. I did not make a call. Uh, fortunately, I didn't take that. But Maggie, this is the third time he's kind of fired himself from the play calling duties. I think there shouldn't be a fourth time. Like he's got the right guy now calling the plays. Yeah. Maggie can sit back and observe not only during the game, but be just. I'm sure he's very involved in everything that goes on during the week and should be um he didn't get dumb overnight i mean he he's got a good background and good pedigree and so it's just you know let the other people around you do what they do it's a it's a it's a building talented team in some respects some guys are getting older some guys are just bursting onto the scene like justin fields and given time i think this is a team that can turn things around Derek carr by the way had an off week and i still like him here uh, I'm sold on Hunter Renfro, Waller, and uh, Henry Ruggs. Uh, and with the return of Josh Jacobs, who's worthy of playing, I, I like that. Kenyon Drake, not a fantasy option anymore. He's not fantasy worthy. So if you've got Kenyon Drake, you just might as well uh, cut him and pick up somebody else. Uh, Brown let, me just, started- let me just jump in and say this. Hunter Renfro is probably the best form tackler now I've seen in the NFL after busting <laughs> up that fake punt. And then I <laughs> got his head across the body. Punched the ball out at the same time. It was fantastic. Browns and Chargers. It's the usual cast characters in Cleveland. Hunt leading the way with Chump being, uh, Chubb being solid. Mayfield looked good against Minnesota, although his numbers were not great. So I see more of the same against the uh, against the uh, Chargers. And I'm I'm back on the Beckham trail as well. I think he he's he's back to being an RB uh, or a wide receiver one. Yeah, the, the Browns are solid, top to bottom. I don't care who you're talking about, offensively or defensively. And I think the Chargers are too. Um, you know, someone who did have an off game last week was Keenan Allen. He's probably their best receiver, most yeah. versatile receiver overall. But he dropped a couple of key passes. One was late in the game on a third down that led to them going forward on fourth down and succeeding. But I think Keenan Allen's type of receiver, one of the best in the league, I'm convinced of. I think he'll bounce back this week. Um, I think another guy that's that can't be talked about enough so far is Austin Eckler. I mean, he... He had some bulldozing type runs, yeah. some elusive runs where he he shook defenders, went around them and scored. He outran a couple of linebackers on some key passes, one being a touchdown. And I think the guy that really goes sort of unsung here so far anyway is Mike Williams. He's got an expanded role. Uh, Justin Herbert overthrew him by a lot on what would have been an 80-yard walk-in touchdown where Mike Williams left the defender behind him. Uh, and so I think he's going to continue to progress and be relied on. And so I think the Chargers here, um, they're at home. If they're going to take that next step into an, you know, should be in the Super Bowl talk to in the Super Bowl, this is the kind of game they're going to have to win. 49ers at Cardinals. Talk about a guy who makes everybody else better. 
What's not to like about Kyler Murray? Uh, just solid all the way around. And he's elevated that team and everybody around him, including the new parts. James Conner has found a home. He's getting 20 fantasy points again in PPR leagues. A.J. Green, Max Williams, also solid. Although you must start Hopkins. He's a little bit off lately, but uh, the rest of the team, you know, and he could be back this week too. So uh, he's, he's not a bench, that's for sure. And I agree with you about Kyler Murray. He does make everybody better. The guy that doesn't really get talked about at all in terms of the Arizona Cardinals is what Larry Kine, their off their uh, GM, has done to put this mm-hmm. this new roster together. Not only were they good last year, they've been better this year, uh, both offensively and defensively. And taking on the 49ers here, I'll say Trey Lance or Garoppolo. Who knows who's going to start right now? Uh, but Lance looked good when he came in last week, and he's a guy also I think that can be – grow into uh, an explosive, not only distributor of the ball, but himself a playmaker. Um, Whether that happens this week or not, I don't know. But I think Debo Samuel and George Kittle are both two very dynamic players once they get the ball in their hands. They look for ways to get Debo Samuel the ball, whether it's as a runner, a receiver, down the field, double moves, play action pass. They can't get the ball enough to that guy and deservedly so. Giants and Cowboys, Cowboys are back solid. Zeke, Dak, Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, they're all good to go. And they're must plays. you got to play them if you have them. I do like the tight end Jarwin, who's getting more involved. And he's been a real pickup on the uh, uh, waiver wires the last couple of weeks, too. And where do the Giants come from? How about that? Daniel Jones, right? Through the air. yards passing. <laughs> he's putting it up through the air. He's making yards on the ground. Now they've got this guy, Saquon Barkley, back who's actually, you know, putting up last game, last couple games, good numbers. Um, you know, and they've got Micah, uh, sorry, this week, obviously, Micah Parsons on defense will have something to say about who does what offensively for the Giants. But I think, don't forget about Sterling Shepard, too. This is one of the better, like Jameson Crowder, one of the better slot receivers in the league. And so I think the Giants, after a slow start and Barkley not being himself, now with him back, I think they're a completely different team. Daniel Jones is now playing with a lot more confidence. I like what the Giants are doing. Bills of Chiefs, Diggs and Sanders are definite plays with Josh Allen. Then there's the emergence of Zach Moss at running back, complimenting Devin Singletary. Now, because of that, neither is an RB1, but they're both possible flex plays. And switching over to the Chiefs, I'll say, man, how did they go from being you know, probably a 10-year-in-a-row Super Bowl contender to this year. They just look shaky, both yeah. offensively and defensively. I know Mahomes is putting up numbers week to week, but their defense looks porous. Uh, they don't always convert drives, uh, you know, can sustain drives when they get them going. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, yes, the Chiefs uh, – I'm sorry, the, uh, the Bills uh, thoroughly dominated last week. And, you know, the Chiefs are coming in, uh, you know, looking for answers themselves. But like you said, they've got a number of weapons. Tyreek Hill can go off at any time. Kelsey can go off at any time. Hard to count the Chiefs out. This is the kind of game, though, they're going to have to step up because the Bills are what look to be, at least, a Super Bowl contender. Still early in the season, but this is the kind of game the Chiefs, if they're going to show themselves as much as everyone else, this is the game they got to be not only – comparatively as adept as the Bills, they've got to win this type of game. You know, it can't be a last minute, you know, Hail Mary type of win either. It's got to be a game where they're solid start to finish. And yeah, they're going to make a statement at this point in, in, in the year. Colts at Ravens Monday night. Baltimore should be solid against the Colts. Look for Jackson to steal the show. Marquise Brown is solid. And it looks like James Proch is getting some action. Uh, I said Latavius Murray would do well here and he did, and he should continue to do so. Yeah, and for the Colts, man, tough to put money on them kind of as a whole. And then fantasy-wise, too. I mean, uh, against Miami, Jonathan Taylor had his first 100-yard game and is also his first rushing touchdown. No receiver other than Mo Alley-Cox has even had a touchdown. Uh, And so Wentz, yes, he's had seven touchdown passes, but it's been in four games. And But there's not many yards going with it. So I, I don't – it's – Fantasy-wise, the Colts, not only fantasy-wise, but just in the NFL, they're not really what people thought they were going to be at this point. Uh, maybe they'll rebound in the second half of the season or hopefully in the, in the next month of the season. 
And there you have it. Kramer and Brill, fantasy football podcast, now a video cast too. You can hear the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Lips, and Odyssey, and wherever you get your shows. And now you can also see the video cast on YouTube by going to my Bob Brill YouTube channel or by finding the links for everything here at Kramerandbrill.com. That's the easiest way. For my friend and colleague, Eric Kramer, I'm Bob Brill. We'll see you next time.